Hi guys, welcome to this video. We have every two months a release of uh, Arconex and all the ISOs, 26 ISOs at this point in time, and 22 desktops. Every single time we release an article on Arconex Info to keep you aware of what's going on, what we are thinking and doing, and what's our, our vision or, or long-term, mid-long-term vision and all that. And also, of course, to tell you what has been going on since March. What's new, basically? That's the question always, right? What's new? So we have this article and we have a video that's going to say what's new and a video that's going to say how to keep on rolling because that's the point of an Arch Linux or an Arch Linux installation is never install again. Just update, update, update and change and update. Okay, let's go over the article. The last months we've gone into detail and it's um, no exaggeration. It really was in our mind all the time. How can we give our users more freedom? Freedom to choose from 22 desktops on any ISO is what came out of it. During Calamaris, you can actually say on any ISO, 26 of them, you can actually decide even though you chose Arch Linux B Plasma to immediately install Awesome with it, right? The Tiling Window Manager together with a full-blown desktop is okay. We've done it XFC Openbox i3 for years. So it's a choice, a freedom. You can install more desktops on your future system. So that's one thing that is um, interesting and, and different with, with the March edition. The other elements we kept on working is how can we provide people that boot up, you hear me right, boot up, and even then don't see anything, get a black screen, they can't boot up. So Linux doesn't know it, the drivers don't know it, it just needs, it seemed, the NVIDIA driver on board. So what we have done now is we release an ISO, 26 ISOs, the same, right, you know, there's only one ISO basically, and from that we derive all the others. NVIDIA is now on board. When you boot up, depending on what you select, and that's important for you to know guys, the, if you need the NVIDIA driver, not the 340, not the 360, uh, 390, but the pseudo Pacman minus S NVIDIA, that one, you choose here number two in the bias setup and here in UFI, it's gonna be line number three. And then you will boot up and you will see in the live environment NVIDIA working. And in your future system, of course, as well. There is, again, the possibility inside Calamaris because an ISO is always a frozen moment in time and the packages were downloaded at a certain moment in time and, and frozen on the ISO. Sorry for the clap. <laughs> But that's what happens, right? And in a few months time, you'll um, have new kernels and new NVIDIA drivers, and maybe yours will be supported by then. So having this possibility, this freedom to actually say on the live environment, please go get me the new one together with all the rest because they are a match, they are uh, supposed to be together. So if they're not so together, I've made already videos about it on arclinks.com, then it breaks because it, they're a match. They should be in combination always. So either it's the Linux kernel or the Linux LTS kernel that you're going for. But standard, we're always on the Linux kernel. At this point in time, we decided to put all these drivers again on the ISO, right? In the March edition, they were void of it. And now they're back again and together with NVIDIA in the hopes that we can support more people. Then, um, okay, I think we set all this. So the 314, 390 needs to be built after installation. These are the older drivers, older computer systems. They need either this one or that one. I have a few down in the basement, but these guys are eight or 10 years old, right? they need the 390, but they do not need it, as I said it wrong. They just boot up fine without 
the NVIDIA drivers, but if you want proprietary drivers from NVIDIA, right, then you need to build them. So remember the most important thing, if you do need NVIDIA drivers, well, why not boot in straight away with line number two, and then um, hopefully we've solved that black screen for you when you boot up. Another thing that came to our attention or idea that we have a what if, right? And you know me and my what ifs. What if with all these possibilities that we have, we do not install OpenBox and i3 anymore on Arcon Lix, ISO, the flagship? Because basically you just say, if you want it, you click here on OpenBox and you click here on i3 and you've got the Arcon Lix from March, from January, from last year. Because it combines two things, or three things, right? XFC4, i3, and OpenBox. But now it gives you the freedom to either select them or not, or jump straight away into PSPWM because somebody on Telegram said, start with that in Tiny Winner Managers, and so on. It is freedom. You can choose whatever you want. And then we have now two ISOs. One which I call the extra large. That's still the flagship, but OpenBox is not there, i3 is not there, unless in Calamaris you select it. Software is all going to be there. GIMP is there, three browsers, editors, all that. All the software we need to develop this project is on the extra large Arcon X L. The extra small is the Arcon X S. What we did there is also get rid of OpenBox and i3, but there is no software. There is not a browser there. It's just XFC4 and XFC4 goodies, if you know already your packages, that's it. The rest is up to you, because then again, we have these wide choices inside Calamaris to do whatever you want. There are so many more screens on there to install software and desktops and so on and so on. So the freedom in Calamaris continues there, of course. It says here the article XD is unchanged, and XB is unchanged, yes and no. In general, yes, it's the same thing. But again, we give you on these ISOs as well the possibility to boot up from NVIDIA, right? So that is changed for everybody. This is everybody are, uh, will see these lines and will have the possibility to boot up with NVIDIA. So that's of course a change that's also inside the D's and the B's. But basically the main change is you have now two ISOs to choose from and this infographic tries to explain you that XFCE, the XL version here, everything is installed and the XS, nothing is installed and you install the software. But wireless works, printers work, Bluetooth work, that's something important that will not work on Arcanix D since that is really the, you know your thing, you know what to do and you know what to install and what to activate and so on, that's your thing starting with a very bare system, the most bare system we have. All right, and a video to explain all that. So maybe you would have this thing in your head, what happened to the Arcanix ISO, the flagship? What, what happened, right? Well, you know already that OpenBox and i3 are a goner and you have to install them via Calamars, but this is the list. These are no longer part of our ISO. And these have been added to our ISO. Speed test, CLI, Git, Arconix, Config, all desktops. This has been created to try to let the packages work together, let the desktops work together. There are 22 desktops, more to follow. This particular package is applied to many packet desktops, 21 of them, right? And the deconf all desktops is applied to uh, 17 of them. And five have a specific one, specific deconf. Trizen has been removed, but Paru is in. So Paru is a binary package, which is uh, just uh, type Paru right in the terminal, but bin as a package, pseudo pacna minus s Paru bin. 
the configuration is not that ideal, so we made our own configuration. So you'll get a .config slash paru uh, folder, and that's where it sets your uh, well your configuration. Rip grip is something we've um, told you on YouTube. That's pretty interesting. You can find words in hundreds, thousands of documents, and it will just put out. Here is a mention of the word. There's the mention of the word. It is uh, for me now. I have the platinum searcher and I have rip grip, rip grip to find elements. It's development tool, right? But might be interesting for you. We have created a new package to ensure that the Sardi arc icons are always set. So actually a package for one file, but then we can set it, of course, in different desktops. The same for variety. Sometimes we need to auto start for variety just to make it beautiful when you boot up your uh, chosen desktop. And sometimes, sometimes it's automatically. But if we need it, we have a package that just says dot config auto start variety desktop and it will boot up. All our x86 videos are there again, plus the NVIDIA. It's all now on the ISO. And for the other ISOs like the Arconix uh, B Plasma, I believe it's this one, the icons we're using there. Gnome has Guake as auto start. And some of us in Tiling Window Managers use the volume icon. So we have made it more granular, more detailed. So we can actually have less conflicts with each other. We show you also the Arconix um, XL, the Arconix L version of Calamars, which means you get already an XFC, so you get already SDM. The only thing you can decide, for instance, here is get more. So SDM is installed by default, but not all of our themes. So if you like one of them, you just say click. I'm going to install the blue one, the material one. You'll see it later on. But you can also decide to switch and say, OK, let's take Lightium, like that better. Freedom, freedom, freedom all the time. And here we show you what our freedom is. An Arconix XL in XFCE, I dislike having these applications on my machine. That's a personal thing, which means here's the freedom to install it if you like them. Right? If you want to burn ISIS to a DVD, great, XF burn is there. Or you like the wallpapers of XFC4, click and it's installed. So again, a choice and all the rest of our 21 desktops. We created also something to make Samba a little bit easier to install. So a Arconix Meta Samba package that is going to make it easier for me to share stuff over the, the uh, local area network, LAN, right? And not with internet, that's not the point of Samba. Samba is sharing a file, a, well, a folder, and then there are files and folders in that, in that um, folder that you share with the others at home. So that's, that's um, created as well. So that Samba is running and that you can share all kinds of videos and tutorials and also uh, scripts and so on. Information is available, videos are available, available, you know me. Well, we, I don't know if you know this, but we have uh, a close contact with other developers of, um, uh, well, well, Arch and Debian and Manjaro and, and so on. And I asked the Endeavor OS, look guys, I see you have this uh, great reflector simple tool, which is basically always the same issue, right? If you want to update your system, it's coming from Arch Linux servers around the world. And there are thousands of them out there, no, hundreds of them around the world, right? But which are the best ones? And we have the mirror. That's an alias. If you type alias mirror, you'll see what it says. And there are more than there's just that one. And you can make your own because it's just a application a reflector with some switches here 
and say save it now to the mirror list of Pac-Man. And then Pac-Man will get it from that, those servers that you find, that you select. So yeah, all of them are different. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ways. And now our tenth way to choose here visually. I want to have servers from here, from there, from there. I would take not just one, but your country and all the countries surrounding or in the neighborhood of. And then you can select HTTPS or HTTP and sort, etc., etc. But that's coming from Endeavor OS, all credit to them. I'll just uh, import it and change the code so it will work on ours. Since um, LightDM is out as official display manager, we have changed some things inside open box menu since it was pointing to LightDM. So we've changed it in favor to SDM. Arch ISO is in meantime at 53, but it's no problem for us. I mean, it's just an update like any other package. But with this number, we've added these guys to our list since it's uh, recommended by the Arch Linux guys. And here's our blue theme. The SDDM Materia theme. Now it's a beautiful theme. The black one looks like this, the dark one, I think it's called. But um, it's a new one. We've got it. We can use it rather than the standard one sugar candy. Videos to explain all that. Duff is an application that's now standard on all ISOs. We've been working with Duff for a while because last time, remember, when we went to investigate all our possibilities, we can have encryption and all that, X4, PTRFS, JFS, XFS, RISERFS. It comes from this period in time that we say, let's have a look what's possible. We made our own Calamaris tool for it, so we can actually choose the future file system and say, okay, I want to have ButterFS and that's that. But this quickly gives us an overview of what system we're on. And indeed, in this case, I am on ButterFS. Okay. So that's done for you. Well, VMware, we made such a beautiful script so that um, VMware application should become full screen and actually just uh, broke the system but because suddenly something happened inside the package not inside our script but the, the packages changed somehow and our script actually made it worse and we couldn't boot up in vmware anymore so script out boot everything everything is, is possible again in vmware but you'll stick here if you'll have at the start a resolution of 800 by 600 and then it's up to you in whatever desktop you are to tell them hey I've got more 1920 by 1080 for example and then he will set it we're using the Calamars version 3.2.39.3 we keep investing time and energy in making Calamars better it's a win-win situation there so that's cool and we can now for example you know when I say that everything is frozen, right? Well, it's it's in this time around with Calamaris, it gets a little bit less frozen. When we have a list of potential packages to install, Calamaris actually goes online, if it can, right? And it finds a new configuration. It will provide you that list of packages. So it's less frozen in time. The net install modules change. They get their data from the internet. And if I change something, it's changed in the Calamaris of six months ago. That's, that's crazy, but that's good, right? That's good programming. Then the Xlaunch is an application I discovered somehow, or was it by a user, don't recall. But um, this is the look that you get. It's your it's, it's full screen, it's all black. And depending on the icons you have, it will show either these icons or those icons. And we've made a video, a film, a scripts 
for awesome BSP WMI3. There, the code is in there, but it's not applied. So it's entirely up to you to say, okay, love this. Then you run or you install Xlaunch and you can get your own configuration, but this is our configuration. So it sets a little bit the font and how it's displayed and then the width and the size and all that. You can play around with some settings and that's cool. So that's Xlaunch for you. Alacrity is there as well at some point in time. Um, it was mentioned on Discord, I guess. And I said, okay, let's make a Arch Linux Alacrity kit. So another configuration for another application, basically. And that's just a small image. Carly is a project, if you don't know what this is about, Carly is a project that's on ArcLinuxISO.com. They all have a reason for their existence, these websites. Here we talk only about Carly. And what is Carly? A customized Arch Linux ISO. This is me explaining to you how I built Arch Linux. From A till Z. And we've been talking for a while, right? Carly 1, Carly 10. So it's basically a binge watch thing. You go over all the articles where we started off and, and, and then we discovered something and there was an update and there was a problem and it's all explained. Every little step we made is explained over and over again, never skipping anything, creating repos, pushing to GitHub. It's all explained from A to Z. Here we are using Git ignore and so on and so on, right? So that's a story, a series of videos and the last time, the last one I did was the Arch ISO 53-1 that came in and we need to adapt, so we need to change, we need to follow it through. Okay, so that's Carly. So Carly is a really from A to Z because people often ask what's then ALCI? So ALCI was a what if I had and it has a place here it was part of, but it is not. This is has nothing to do with Arch Linux, besides the fact that I created it. That's it. ALCI is something else. ALCI is the what if. What if I take an Arch Linux ISO, I take Calamaris, mash them together, so that I don't need to go to all these steps in a TTY. I don't have a black screen, no. I boot up in a beautiful screen and it says, okay, do you want to install next, 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 next. And in the end you have an installation, install, boom. And you boot up into an Arch Linux system, but nothing more than that. Just an empty Arch Linux with some packages, like for example here, XFC4 goodies and XFC4 with Lightyear, with Xorg, and that's it. So you see something graphically. If you don't install these guys, it's just a black screen. Back to the Arch Linux steps and guide what to do next. So that's for the more advanced Arch Linux user who's tired of um, doing everything manually. Um, so that's a graphical way of installing Arch Linux. Also there, we had to update some packages. Calamars need to be updating, updated and 53 dash one there for Arch ISO as well. We had some fun with reporting tools. I don't know if this one, this is pretty normal still. So this is our NeoFetch. But at the end of our bash RC, we can say, no, forget NeoFetch. I'm gonna go for SFetch and then pipe lolcat, install sudo pacma minus s lolcat, of course. And SFetch is part of your system. So that's that, that's just some fun. This as well, actually. Um, there was a question on GitHub about the Conky Lazuli, and I went into inside the code, and as a result, uh, I've added something. What was it again? I think it's the yesterday volume here. So you can actually keep track of all the stuff you download and upload. And for us, that's quite important since we're doing a lot of uploading and downloading all the time. And then you say, oh yeah, yesterday was uh, 
a calm day. Received five gigabytes, 10 gigabytes of upload. So download and upload, right? Voila, that's it. And then a video to explain the code. A fun script, our tanks is there. We have released the new, new um, desktop, FVWM3. So yeah, we better make tutorials about it as well. So we'll do that as well. This is our what's new video. I'm gonna make the what's new video right now. Well, copy paste in here. This this is the video, right? And how to stay rolling. It's not nice yet, but the video is probably already converted. Let's see if YouTube has already changed the image. And there we go. Updating Arc Linux 2103 to 2005 to keep rolling video. What I'm going to add is, um, of course, the mention somewhere that we have a new desktop, FVWM3. Forgotten in all the freedom stuff, we do have a new desktop to try out. So that's something I need to add. And for the rest, everything is, I think, quite um, well. It's clear if you go and, and scroll through it and read it. That's the standard um, closing text we always have on any of our articles. I'm thinking if I forgot anything. Well, don't think so. The only thing is, I do hope you like the way we were going and thinking about giving you all the freedom. It might feel complex in the beginning. I, I know that, that we, um, we give you choices that you think I can't make these choices because I don't know their choices, right? Best advice I can give you is just go through the installation and don't click anything. If you don't click anything, then what you see is what you get, right? If you boot into a live environment, what you see is what you will get. And later on, you can learn more about all these applications and desktops and so on at a later moment in time. But first, you need to get a grasp of, okay, what's Linux, what's Arch Linux, and all these updates and aliases and all that. But I do hope you enjoy the learning because that's basically why we're all doing this, is um, trying to make people to love Linux, basically. And we're not talking about Arch Linux or Arch Linux at all. See that you love Linux in general, because the knowledge you have here, of get here from Plasma or BSPWM, you can learn that over, over and use that on other distros as well, not based on Arch. I just wanted to end here, I thought. Let's, um, I've done a new comparison. Take, I've taken a look at all the packages we have and the Arch Linux packages I are by far in the majority, right? 93% of our ISO packages, the number of packages, not the size, the number of packages are all coming from Arch Linux. And then there is 3% in this case here, and that's pure, so the orange one, that's the XL version, that's where um, three percent is Arcolinx. Just three percent is Arcolinx, but it's years of work, right? Of perfecting and making it, yeah, nice, basically. And the four percent here, the third party, is packages that we built for you. It's not from us either. Third party is not from us. It's AOR. We pre-built it for you. Otherwise, you have to build it. So basically, <laughs> if you if you say that three percent of our house iso is from us that's clear because sometimes people ask what's the difference between arclinks and arclinks uh three percent that's it that's the best message we can send you we are arclinks with some configurations basically and choices we always make choices all the time and if you make different choices you get a different distro that's it but we're all Linux. And that's my view on things. Anyway, I hope this is also some something that um, can make things a bit clear. Um, but as you hear, I have to go. All right.
Cheers.